<clears throat> hey guys um so after screaming in my car i'm finally home and i can talk now about all the questions you guys have been sending about COVID 19 um i appreciate that a lot of you look up to me um and yes i did do grad school working with hiv virus um and not actually studying HIV, I was using it for cell culture. So I did get out of grad school without actually catching HIV. So I'm very, uh, <laughs> I know what to do with killing viruses and cells and things like that. Um, so somebody asked um, about masks and whether they help you. Of course they do. I don't know why they start. well, I do know why. I guess they thought they would control the public buying and hoarding by telling people that they didn't help, which I find really dangerous. Um, but don't hoard things. It doesn't help anyone. Um, but masks will help. And you can use the same mask over and over, just spray it down with some alcohol or sanitizing spray um, and let it dry. Don't put chemicals on your face, obviously. Um, paper ones you're just going to have to um, throw out. Um, but they do block the uh, spit that comes out of people's mouths when they talk and sneeze and cough. Um, as you've seen earlier, I tried to go to work and I was caught in traffic. Um, and people had their windows open and they were spitting out their windows. Don't fucking do that. That's disgusting. And even if you don't have symptoms, we were finding that 50% of people with COVID-19 actually don't have any symptoms at all. So <clears throat> refraining from spitting out the fucking window and spitting in general is um, helpful. I've seen lots of people spitting on the ground, spitting out their window of cars. Dangerous, dangerous. Um, what else? Yes, there's a bunch of movements to make masks. Um, obviously, small companies like myself, we need to keep all our personal protective gear to actually function and save lives before COVID-19 by providing health solutions. So we can't donate to multi-billion dollar hospitals. And we're telling people, if you can't afford to not have those masks, do not donate them. It's going to help you stay safe too. But if you have like, if you're hoarding, you need to give it up um, because there is a um, shortage of personal protective equipment. And you know, it's not just the doctors dealing with COVID-19. There's also people who are sick and need, you know, medicines that are manufactured using the same personal protective equipment so that we don't contaminate them. And it's really annoying. Um, you can use hand sanitizer on gloves and reuse them. Um, if you're using nitrile gloves, um, there, you, there is a way to clean those and reuse them. I mean, just for personal protective measures. Um, <clears throat> soap and water is still the best. I see people like relying too much on hand sanitizer and I'm like, soap and water works really good um, because then you get the pouring of water over your hands and kind of flushes it away. What else? Um, what kind of material do masks need to be made out of? As far as I know, um, cotton polyester blend, a tight, 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 tight. We've as tight as, you know, something thick, uh, multiple layers of it. Um, if you're making your own mask, um, you can even add uh, like, um, I don't know what it's called. Maybe one of my fashion friends knows like that really tight woven, meshy, reusable stuff. It's kind of stiff. You can put that in between the layers and um, it has a good filtration level. This doesn't mean you can let people sneeze on you though. Um, Viruses are, are very tiny particles. You can't see them. And obviously with this one, we don't even know who has it because they don't show symptoms right away. Um, and some people will never show symptoms and children and young people, um, very young people like teenagers may not even show symptoms. So it's a scary time. Um, but, and I know <laughs> a lot of people don't live like me, like secluded and um, sorry. <laughs> I do lots of stuff at home. I have a, obviously there's little plants starting um, behind me. Um, I, there's spring cleaning to do. 
Um, as long as you're away from your neighbors, like I live in an apartment, I, it's hard to be six feet from my neighbors, but I go out and garden when they're inside and vice versa. Like we just kind of take turns going outside. There's no need to go like anywhere. And the traffic is incredibly thick for a national emergency. And some of us just want to go to work and not get sick and go home. Like if you're performing essential services, we're not the people who are really like out there cruising. We're trying to get to work and go home. Um, the other thing is I'm seeing a lot of people think this is a joke. Um, a lot of black folks in particular, and I've seen also some really scary things with Latinos, like our people need to watch out. I don't know what's going on in our communities, but we need to talk to people and make sure they know this is serious. All it takes is one little piece of particle and you'll be sick and dying in the hospital. Like this is not, it's very serious. And people 30 to 50 are being hospitalized too. Um, most adults um, will feel very ill from this. Um, and when you see people with masks and gloves, even if you don't fucking believe it, it's like, I see people pointing and laughing, like, what is wrong with you? I live in a neighborhood where people decided to have a drum circle. I don't know if they're social distancing circle, but I hope because this does not need to come to our neighborhoods where obviously people live in apartments. We don't have multi-million dollar homes and we probably don't have the money to get into the emergency room at some point. And as the case is double in LA, I see why it's not the time to have a picnic. It's not vacation. This is literally shelter in place. This is like an earthquake just happened. Um, it's really scary to me that people can't be home or by themselves for a couple weeks. I have a partner and we've been sheltering in place for like a month. But like, it's kind of like being alone because we're kind of like doing our own thing. But I just find it odd that people can't find something to do. Um, draw a picture, spring cleaning, as I mentioned before, play a game, play solitary game, play a video game. I thought we were complaining that kids never went outside. And now you're throwing your kids outside right now. I, I see kids playing in the street and I'm like, this isn't, why aren't they on their video games? <laughs> I mean, maybe that was my generation. Um, another question I get asked is about what sanitizes stuff. Obviously, I'm a biochemist. I would know that. 10% bleach, but obviously you don't want to bleach everything <laughs> or can't bleach everything. Um, you want 70% alcohol. Um, isopropanol, if you have the 99%, you can actually dilute it just a slimage. And if you don't know what you're doing, don't dilute it. <laughs> um, but isopropanol, you don't want to put on your hands and then eat because it leaves trace chemicals that are called bitters. And we use it in isopropanol so people don't drink it. Freedom is a hell of a thing. See, the more freedom people get, the more it gets taken away because y'all just fucking act like rubbing alcohol is drinkable. It's not drinkable. And it's made undrinkable now because it's denatured. Um, other alcohols will work as well. Um, Everclear, um, somebody asked me about rum, and so I wanna make it clear, 151, is 75% alcohol. Yes, it will work. <laughs> Do you want to smell like you've been drinking all day? Probably not. But in lieu of hand sanitizer or sanitizing sprays, it might be the thing that works. And if you're staying home, it doesn't fucking matter, does it? <laughs> um, so like Everclear 151. Yeah, that'll, that'll do it. Um, soap and water are the best bet though soap and water rubbing soap and water that is the best thing because it's a whole mechanical thing the washing part the particles get washed off and of course damaging the uh capsid that it's in yeah and uh so i won't bore you with the details of what a viral capsid is made of but it's basically soluble in soap and water and alcohol and in bleach i will note oxyclean Hydrogen peroxide seems to be effective too. 
Um, but I wouldn't trust it to hydrogen peroxide. I'd probably use something like OxyClean. Um, hypochlorite, sodium hypochlorite, right? I, somebody can check me on that. Um, let's see what else. Um, but yeah, so this is coming from someone who worked in a laboratory with viruses and never caught the virus herself. And so I feel like my friends want me to say something comforting and all I can say is stay home wash your hands, wash your legs. Somebody brought that up. That should be part of your shower. Wash yourself when you come in from outside. I only go to my lab. <laughs> I go up a private entry, but there's three doors. I use gloves and I come home in my own car. I don't take public transportation and I still take a shower before chilling in my house. I change my clothes. As you can see, I wasn't, I was wearing something else before. I wash my hair. I keep my hair covered. You know what? If someone coughs in your hair and I'm noticing this and it's really triggering me, the people swabbing throats and having their hair out. They should have hair nets on. The virus can attach to hair, stick to hair. It's a small particle. <clears throat> Excuse me. I have allergies. I've been self-isolated for over a month. Um, but anyways, the particle can stick to hair and whip in the air so I actually cover my hair in public places and when I get home I still wear it up um, and I think my hair is actually better than half the people swabbing people's throats and testing for COVID-19 you know and I'm seeing this on the TV and I'm like why is their hair down if you look in South Korea or China or anywhere they're actually getting this under control they have their hair covered it's just something for you guys to pay attention to. Hi, Fatima. Hi, love. Ooh, I'm hitting my mic. Mm. <clears throat> Excuse me. My medication's making me a little bit um, off. So those are the things I can suggest. Um, don't, if you want to really be safe, clean the bottoms of your shoes. Um, with soap and water or alcohol-based sanitizer, Lysol or whatever. I mean, I don't wear shoes in my house. I think that's weird. Um, oh, it's good to see you too. See, my friend Fatima's here. And Fatima actually caught it. Um, I won't say I don't know if I caught it or not because I had something very similar all December after traveling. And I actually self, we self-isolated for like a month my partner and I both had it and it was some sort of pneumonia and it was very painful to my lungs um, to the point where I had, I, as you, most people know, I smoke cigarettes daily, like not many, only like three or four, but I stopped because, <clears throat> and I'm still suffering with this. I feel like my allergies are coming now and it's horrible. Um, but back in December, like early December, uh, Minona, yeah, because we missed like work parties and stuff, and it made our lungs feel like they were on fire. We couldn't breathe unless the air was warm, like really warm, and it was so fucking painful. And if that's the same thing, I, I'm like almost in tears. Like I don't want anyone to catch that. And that's if that was COVID nineteen. I had we had pneumonia, walking pneumonia though. Um, it's incredibly important that people don't catch it. And if even if I survived, like whatever I had this winter after I had influenza, I don't want anyone to catch. And it was pneumonia is all I you know. It was not the flu. And so even people, I may have had it. There was no COVID-19 test back then. And I know my friend Fatima, who's here now, she definitely would tell you, you don't want to catch this shit. Um, that's why people like me are so angry at people just reacting this way. Um, there's a lot of people that had a funky ass pneumonia over the winter, and that's more reason not to put yourself at risk. You know, pneumonia damages your lungs, and COVID-19 is not a human virus. So we don't know how much immunity we have to different strains, and if you had pneumonia this winter, guess what? You're more susceptible to getting it again because pneumonia damages your lungs. 
And if you're like me and you're a weed smoker or you like a little tobacco here and there, guess what? You're even more susceptible to dying from this. So I'm getting really worried as we double cases in LA and I see people just rolling around. Hi. And I'm not the type of person who is paranoid typically, believe it or not. I'm very safe, respectably safe. I don't trip on shit, but I'm tripping right now. Hi, Stephanie. Oh my God. Ah! <gasps> Oh my God. And Stephanie has a story. Like all of us have stories. Every time I open my Twitter, there's somebody and saying my father died, my mother died, my cousin died, my sister died. He tested positive for COVID-19. This is incredibly scary. And from somebody, I had I had painful, horrible, some kind of viral pneumonia. That's all, you know. And I had already had the flu this winter, and I stopped working completely. And we didn't go to any parties. We didn't do anything for the holidays. It was just like, no way. We were passing it on, but because pneumonia, you know, we have a lot of elders around us. I'm lucky to have older friends, and I love my mom, so I hang out with my mom. And I have a lot of friends that are older. So I, you know, I work with a lot of kids and people that are, have rare genetic disorders and don't have immunizations because of it. So I have to be very careful with myself. So when I do get sick, it's like, I can't work. I have to, and I do self quarantine because I'm a molecular biologist. It would be irresponsible and ignorant of me, like <laughs> willingly <laughs> being willfully ignorant to go to work sick. And I know that the kids I work with can't have vaccines. So when I get my flu shot, I have to wait a while before I work again. And then when I, you know, pneumonia shot, which is going to be the next one, um, I'm adding, you know, I can't work after my vaccines. I can't work if I'm viral shedding. I can't do anything. And I work in a sterile lab, which in which it wouldn't matter. But still, I just refuse. Hi, Sandra. That's so scary, Stephanie. You know, I, so when... I had pneumonia this season, whether COVID-19 or not. I went out to have a cigarette. I don't know why it was wrong with me. I almost passed out. I wobbled back in the house and sat down and my boyfriend's looking at me like, and I didn't want to tell him that I almost passed out from smoking because he'd be like, I told you to stop smoking. <laughs> it's like my one cigarette of the day. It, it's scary though. And there was times I woke up gasping for air from that and it hurt. Like literally it was just like a little chilly in the room and it would make my lungs hurt like fire. And I felt like I couldn't breathe and I'd have to stand up and walk around and I'd get dizzy and see at this point, I'm glad if I did have it, I don't know what it is. Cause I would have went to the emergency room. Probably not. I just thought it was like, dizzy and sick. You know, my fever was like 102, 101. It wasn't too bad. It wasn't like 103 or 104. It wasn't that bad, but I was sweating profusely for three days. And then after that was worse, it got worse. I had no fever, but now my lungs were on fire and I couldn't breathe. And if that's COVID-19, if that's regular pneumonia, you don't want to get it. Um, but yeah, it takes a long time to recover. I still feel like there's stuff in my throat and now it's allergy season. So we don't need all this. Stay home, make a costume, make a mask. Look at the stuff behind me. I made all that stuff. Look, little flower pots, a little gold trim. Got like Super Mario star right here. It's like a little wall hanging. I made it crafty. In fact, that's like all my little baby plants back there. You can see more plants, plants. Make a terrarium. Those are terrariums. Make a terrarium. Grow some food. <laughs> and the worst part, you know, you guys, I, I obviously I'm like very down to earth, blue collar girl. I look up to so many people 
who are more educated, experienced than me. And a lot of them are going to their summer homes and traveling and stuff during this. And I'm just like, rural hospitals are going to be like really, really hardest hit by this. And they don't have any ICU beds. You're better off in a city because there's more ICU beds, more ventilators. I'm like, it's, it's crazy. It's like just like understanding how bad it could get. Um, a lot of my friends work for county hospitals. A lot of them are still like residents and stuff. And I have friends at FEMA who've been saying this for months. And that's why like a month ago we started self-isolating because we were just like, this is coming. It's already in the population and it's spreading fast and it's mutating. And so this is like a really bad sci-fi movie. I've seen this movie before. <laughs> like it's unreal because I'm a sci-fi fan, obviously for <laughs> known reasons. Yeah, stuff. It's really weird how it's hitting people different too. I mean, I saw descriptions from people my age with the same kind of habits, weed smokers and stuff. And they were like, um, in December, because a lot of us travel around that time. I think, you know, November, December, we were in Hawaii in November and uh, got off the plane and it was like, boom, flu. And um, we assumed it was just people on the flight were sick. But then it was like right after that, again, traveling around, <laughs> um, we got something else. It was horrible. Um, my boyfriend was like, throwing up you know i didn't get as sick but yeah it was hard and we were both sick at the same time and it was the worst respiratory illness i've ever had <laughs> i survived h1n1 and this was totally different this was like i can't breathe um we used a humidifier like you know and uh, hot showers twice a day um eucalyptus, bergamot blends in, in steam. I steamed my lungs. Like I just, you know, like you're doing spa treatment. That's why my skin looks probably so good. Look at that. Stay home and do a home spa. There's an idea. I mean, there's so many people like, <laughs> I'm so bored. And I'm like, it's only been a week mandatory in most places. I've been in my house for a month. <laughs> and what sucks is like, this is how we live kind of we're not like social people especially when we're sick obviously but um nobody's bored i thought i'd reach out though because a lot of people are hearing my inbox and i don't know what to tell like every individual person but just like random facts i can i'm a scientist i can tell you what it's you know what it is hey jessica oh my god I, i've known jessica since she was a little girl Four kids. Oh. Yeah. It's hard. I don't have any kids, but I always think like keeping kids washing their hands normally is hard. <laughs> They're like, ah. and I don't know, you know, like if we're like hanging out, you know, if you have a yard or whatever. And, you know, the kids are playing in the dirt, probably the dirt, you know, there's lots of things that eat viruses and it's more balanced and natural. You know, these viruses are coming because our climate's changing and we're industrial, agriculturing everything. The most dangerous about that isn't really plants, but animals sitting on top of each other in their own feces and, you know, just all this, you know, um, and it's not that it's a Chinese thing. Americans do it too. The American swine flu, since we're going to call this the Chinese flu, we can call the American swine flu. Yes, the pig flu came from America, um, was from pork agriculture. Um, I don't eat pork. <laughs> I suggest people not eat pork. But I caught H1N1 when I was in medical school because it was um, like, you know, kind of like an epidem epidemic. I forgot what they called it. It sucked. <clears throat> All of these make your head hurt. You have horrible fevers. And um, until we get a hold on meat agriculture, it's going to be a problem. I mean, I'm begging my partner to move out 
so we can have chickens and our own vegetable patch because I just it's very risky and things pass very quickly in cities so um and that's because not because people are like necessarily walking around but they're sitting down and touching things and that's where California really messed up like people I get like wanting to walk on the beach and if you live there by all means you're you can walk to it, but when you get in your car, you clog the arteries of the city for emergency workers and necessary people to get to work who maybe are making your food or um, making your medicines, um, keeping things normal so no one has to hoard. Um, and so that's important, but you're also going somewhere and sitting down like on the trails and stuff and sitting on the rocks and spitting. Oh. I don't know why people spit, but this is not the time. It's disgusting and it's passing germs, whether you know it or not. Um, but once you sit down and start touching things, that's when uh, contagions can attach. So it's good that it's sunny at least, but it doesn't mean that we're not going to, you know, suffer from transmission. There's obvious community transmission in LA. And if you look at it, yeah, it's a lot of rich people. It's like Brentwood, Beverly Hills, da, 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 you know, but there are cases in our neighborhoods too. So it doesn't matter, you know, and on top of it, you don't know what those rich people went, you know, they're coming to our bodegas and our black, grocers and our vegan grocers and our Caribbean grocers because their grocers are out of toilet paper. I'm just saying like wealthy people want to hoard all the toilet paper and they will go apparently are going coming to the hood to buy all the toilet paper out of the bodegas. So you don't know where you'll catch it. So definitely be safe. And if your city has a mandatory lockdown, like don't go driving around. What are you looking for? Go home. <laughs> Hi, Rebecca. I've known Rebecca a long time too. How you doing? It's scary. It's so scary. And I don't think that I would suggest people, you know, keep moving around and touching things unless it's absolutely necessary, you know? And it sucks for those of us who I actually use grocery delivery on a regular basis because I have autism. It's very hard for me to go to the store. I stand in front of one shelf for an hour just staring because there's because we live under capitalism and there's too many brands and too many types of everything I want to buy. If I want to buy a can of tomatoes, I have to look at 50 fucking types and 20 different brands. There's like 100 kinds of canned tomato and I can't go to the store because I get so distracted. Because everything's like that. Tortilla. I want a corn tortilla. And there's like different sizes, different brands. I just want a fucking tortilla. It's like, I want steak. This is like, do you want top brown this steak? And I'm like, you know what? I need to sit down. <laughs> and that's how I started ordering groceries in grad school because it just helped. I could sit down at my desk and say, look through all the different things and go back and forth between what did I need to do and ordering my groceries. And so there are people with different abilities that need those services. Yes, but that does. So we're waiting a week for grocery delivery at this point. And um, it's funny that people are still clogging up the or ordering groceries, but they're also driving around. It's bizarre. I have a, oh, hi, Becca. Ooh, scientific question. I'm trying to understand how the virus has been able to travel the world and remain helipotent. I'm not like, um, it, well, we don't know. We know that there's at least two strains. Um, it's probably traveling in airplanes. I, I just, it seems like world travelers are getting it a lot and affluent people are getting a lot. And what's happening in rural hospitals getting clogged up is, a reflection of people with second homes that are going to their vacation homes because they don't they can work remotely they're like oh vacation that attitude is kind of because they they might not know they had it and then they go out to the countryside and now it's a one horse town with one icu bed and then that one ventilator is it's so they have to use a splitter two, two or three people on one ventilator um 
it didn't necessarily change every time it reached countries. It may have changed within certain people's bodies for whatever reasons. Survival of the fittest pushes the virus to change and mutate to better affect their host. Now, it's not in it's it's not in COVID nineteen's interest to necessarily kill the host, but it's not a human virus. <laughs> it's about virus. And um, so it doesn't have its potency. It's, I don't know. I don't know if it's like the amount of virus that people are taking in, like the vi what we call the viral load, or it's an age issue. We've seen that people with existing lung problems are very high risk, and people with hypertension and heart problems are very high risk. And that has to do with you know the inflammation of the lungs and the lungs' ability to repair itself. Also, like a lot of the people that died were smokers or had other lung damage. Not weed smokers, cigarette smokers, but still. I have a whole thing about how, why weed keeps me from being sick. <laughs> um, weed is also an anti-inflammatory, so um, it's not the best thing to have if you do have COVID-19. Um, they're seeing that anti-inflammatories can like hinder more than help. And a lot of people might wonder like what I do when I'm sick. I am so basic. I drink chicken broth and with tons of herbs in it. I have orange juice, lemonade. I stay home, obviously. I take a couple showers a day, you know, steam. I use a diffuser with eucalyptus oil. Um, I know that's not for all people. Some people have seizures, so they can use like, I think bergamot, red thyme. Um, I don't know if red thyme would cause seizures, but in a diffuser, it's really dilute. So if I can use it around my cats, it should be fine. Um, and I stay in bed, I wear socks. I can stay warm um, even when I'm sweating because uh, fevers, you know. And hydrated, lots of warm liquids, warm liquids, warm liquids, warm liquids. From someone who loves ice water, warm liquids. <laughs> a lot of people are in flyer fight mode, making them anxious and panic, not thinking rational. Yeah. And they're they're moving around a lot. And that's the whole problem with cruising. I saw somebody spit out of their car today. And the car behind them, I was like five cars back. I like saw it in the sunshine, because it's sunshine here in LA. And I had my windows up and I have a HEPA purifier on my car, but that's another story. <laughs> but I, there was a car behind them with the kids and the mom and the dad, everybody in the car with the windows wide open. And I was just like, fuck, it's so disgusting. Stop spitting. And he, this guy's just spitting out his car to be a tough guy, you know, driving my car spit out the window, yeah disgusting it's disgusting don't don't spit right now just don't <laughs> and driving around from aimlessly is not helping the planet and also can spread germs in that same way especially if the windows open and everybody doesn't need to go to the store you know if um one person needs to do the shopping and then the other person can watch the kids. You know, it needs to be like that because it's going to be mandatory soon because it's just spreading way too much. And it's, it'll, it randomly kills people. I mean, if I did have it, I wouldn't have been surprised if that was it. It was horrible. And I felt like I was dying, like really scared in this house, like about to go to the ER. And if it was that, no wonder. <laughs> yeah people um fight or flight mode isn't gonna help it's more likely you're gonna catch this and die and then you're gonna need all the fucking 50 billion rolls of toilet paper you hoarded i mean the more you touch things and bring them into your home you know the more likely you're to get it and um I, so i hope everyone's wiping things down you don't you can use a soapy wet cloth for things that are plastic or wrapped in plastic just because people have been touching that stuff. We're about to have a grocery delivery and I have like the alcohol spray out like Ch -ch 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 -ch. like I was in self culture because I'm not. <laughs> and when you know, we have them leave it outside too. Um, 
because we don't need to come in contact unless we order something with ID and then you can always, you know, sanitize your ID. At least California ID, it, it seems to work fine because um, I do have my beer delivered. Um, but yeah, relaxing is good. Get a bottle, draw a picture, write a novel, go live and talk to your friends about what we're talking about here. <laughs> Oh yeah, essential workers have to strip down at the door and go in the shower. So it's fun for you. Um, oh, he's an accountant. Hmm. I mean, you could throw the clothes in there and just, yeah. No, strip down at the door and take a shower. I do. Just because it sticks to stuff, it doesn't live very long. It lives a shorter life when it's stuck to like clothes and stuff. But yeah, you can also hang them outside. Put them in the sun or your grow tent if you're a Californian like me and you have a grow tent or grow lights. <laughs> That's some strong UV radiation, let me tell you. Um, yeah, I definitely come in. I wore coveralls today because there were so many people out. I wore coveralls and a mask and I tied my hair. I wrapped my hair. I, did, I, I mean, I was just going to my lab. But goddamn, I had somebody try to get in my car. You know, I had people walking up to my car. It's it's crazy. Oh, accountant from Metro. Hey, yeah, cutting them checks. That sucks that they don't have a way to, for them to work from home. I don't think of accountants as essential, but yeah, they got to make sure people are paid though. That's essential work. I'm sure that you don't appreciate the traffic either. <laughs> It's just crazy because a lot of people are just cruising. They're doing 20 miles per hour, pointing at things. I don't, you know, on their phones, ambulances behind them. It's, it's sad. It's sad. Um, but I think that when a lot of people start getting sick in LA, because it's been kind of mild, but now we're starting to double and people start knowing people who are getting sick. I think it's such a selfish culture that that's maybe will help. Um, like even in my, in my neighborhood, it looks like everyone's taking it pretty serious. My immediate neighborhood, but beyond that, like some people think it's a joke. And I don't know how to explain to people that things they can't see, feel and touch um, can kill people. And it's all in your mucous membranes. Oh, I wore glasses today too. I wore my ADHD glasses. I was like, <laughs> mucous membranes are in your butt, your mouth, obviously, your nose, your eyes, all mucous membranes, your privates. You're welcome. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to check in with everybody because there's like a lot of misinformation going on, of course. Um, and Trump isn't helping. I think that um, all workers should general strike whenever Trump says that they should go back to work. Um, that's my political feelings and stance about it because there's no, the only reason they want you to go back to work and risk your life is for them to get paid. Them meaning the rich people that own all the shit. Um, the, <laughs> the reason that I don't have investors in my company and I keep it for me and my patients is these people and they will send people back to work to die. I, yeah. I just wish that the delivery workers and the grocery workers and all the new essential employees, right? Uh, they were like, oh, I thought we were, somebody's called low skilled. Oh, please, my delivery drivers are awesome. But here's the thing. If all those people went on strike in the midst of this COVID-19 pandemic, they would have all of the power in the world. And um, I would back them up. Um, yeah. I just hope that, I don't know. They had a chance, I guess, Bernie Sanders was gonna fix capitalism and make it all fair and good. And then this came and um, I feel like he's acted pretty presidential actually about it, regardless if he's winning or not, or people vote for him or not. I don't watch M M 
and <laughs> I don't watch MSNBC or Fox or any of that shit because it's fucking garbage garbage it's garbage and it's been garbage because when we occupied wall street we were trying to actually get them we're actually pushing for um news to remain news but they passed a law like within that time period that your news could be entertainment and it didn't have to be true so i don't cnn msnbc like they're all like treat the news that way and it's really scary in the age of a pandemic that you can't even turn on the news and like hear facts. Um, I watch the BBC is not much better, but Al Jazeera English isn't much better. But, you know, if you watch all the different countries news, sometimes you'll get a kind of a picture. Um, I, yeah, I watched Arang South Korean news um, during the pandemic before anyone really said anything in America. Um, South China news. Um, those are all on YouTube, too. Um, but yeah, I encourage people to watch other news or um, C-SPAN. Um, C-SPAN is interesting um, and see for themselves what lawmakers are doing and what they're not doing. Um, kid that grew up in C-SPAN, that's something else you can do at home is watch your government work, even though some of them are in quarantine now um, because it's spread around some of the more conservative conferences. I mean, you would think scientists would know, but let me tell you guys, there was a mass, like a mini mass outbreak in Boston at a conference for biogeneticists like me. The Biogen conference, there was like something like almost 200 cases from a science conference. So, you know, you can share all the articles you want. And I know there's a lot of scientists that are going to be perfectly fine and rational, but know that there was a science conference that this spread rapidly around uh, in Boston. It was the Biogen conference, I think. Big corporate pharmaceutical company. <laughs> so be careful, wash your hands. I mean, it's not that big of a deal. Um, and stay home, stay home, stop, stop rolling around. If you're on a bike, please wear a mask because people are spitting out of their cars. If you're driving, don't spit out of your car. If you're on a bike, don't spit. I don't care. I don't care how your mouth feels. Don't spit. Nobody spit. If you're walking down the street, don't spit. Nobody needs to spit. Please stop spitting. It's gross. It's gross anyways. But that's exactly how you transmit germs. And like I said, there was plenty of mouthwash and toothpaste at the store when last time I went. So if you're spitting and not using mouthwash <laughs> or toothpaste, you're like spitting out all kinds of germs. Stop. Stop. But you can also go live and pass on this information to your friends. But guess what? I actually have stuff to do in my house. So I'm going to go. Um, it's been like a really long time. So all right, guys, have a good one. If you have any questions, you can post them. And I'll try to post back. All right. Peace. Oh, I don't even know how to turn this off. Look at me. <laughs>